Hi, I'm Steve. This is the first of a two-part episode on building a compound miter serving tray. I built this from the, the mahogany handles were offcuts from a project that was just too short to do much of anything else with, but for whatever reason, I can't seem to throw anything away. And the, the pine is from a salvaged shipping crate, salvaged materials from a shipping crate. Also, I can't throw those away, so. Anyway, we're gonna cover that in the build. The first part, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna get through making the handles and all the way through the joinery. The second part will be the glue up and finishing. Here I'm using the joiner to face off the one rough face of, of all the pine timber. Sometimes it takes several passes to go through. Once I'm done with that, I use that face against the fence to square up one edge. I do that for every piece. Then I head over to the planer. I'm milling the stock to just over 14 millimeters thick. For the side stock on the bottom piece, I'm going to split that down the middle by resawing, so I will mill that piece thicker. Here I'm at the bandsaw. I'm splitting the piece I reserved for the bottom down the middle. This is a thin kerf blade, which is not my normal resaw blade. It just happened to be the one on the saw, and I didn't, didn't feel like changing it. Uh, guard height is important on this saw, or on all bandsaws. You don't want too much blade exposed. And notice I'm using a push block that has a little ledge on the back and it keeps your hands just well away from the blade. Once I've resaw those pieces, I drum sand them to the rough edges off and now I'm to the clamp. I'm applying one bead of glue to one piece. Then I will fold those over and rub those two pieces together. That provides adequate glue spread. There's no need for brushes. Here I'm using calls. Uh, thin stock has a tendency to pop out of the clamps when you uh, clamp them up. So I'm using these calls. They have packing tape applied to prevent the glue from sticking to the call. And I'm, I'm finishing the, the final edge gluing clamping pressure. Here I'm at the slider. I'm ripping the side pieces to, to rough width. Now once that's done, I'm back to the drum sander with the side pieces and I'm sanding them to final thickness, which is 14 millimeters. Here's the slider set up with a dado stack. It's tilted to 15 degrees toward the, the fence. Notice I'm using a push block. This is one of the few times you'll ever see me use that saw without the upper guard in place. Here I'm, I'm cutting a bevel on the bottom after cutting the dados. This just helps me with that. I, I don't have a full profile on the bottom that keeps it that knife edge away from the fence when I do the miter cut. So now I'm to the miter and you've probably, if you've watched my slider series you've seen this. I had a battery exhausted failure in the middle of the, the videoing on this, uh, this portion of the project so I stole it from, from a, another video. Here I'm cutting the wild end on the uh, uh, compound miter. The blade is set at 43.1 degrees and the fence is set at 14.51 degrees. This is the opposite side cut. Here I've got the bottom out of the clamps. I'm sanding any misalignment out on the drum sander and I'm going to sand this down to final thickness such that it fits in the dados. The reason I do that as opposed to the planer, it, and this will fit through my planer, it's just that my planers have segmented infeed rolls and with that soft pine, if you don't take up enough stock, it leaves indents. Here I'm doing the final profile on the bottom after the miters are cut. The fence on the joiner is set at 15 degrees and I'm taking a single pass cut. If you take more than one pass, make sure you do every piece the same. 
Here I'm taking a measurement of the side pieces and I'm going to transfer that to the bottom. I'm making marks from where the glue joint is and I'm going to center that book match on the bottom. Here I'm using the Fritz and Franz jig to align those marks with the edges where the cut line is and even though the panel's not squared up at this point the Fritz and Franz jig works very well at, at giving you a good clamping pressure and uh, gives you a nice cut. Notice I am not using any stops and all I'm doing is lining the marks up that I made from the layout with the edges of the Fritz and Franz jig. Okay, now that actually is is looking like a very good fit. Okay, so now I need to make a decision on the handles. The uh, I had originally intended on just cutting, making some cutouts here, but I went to the uh, Steve's. I can't throw anything away. Scrap bin or offcut bin, and I pulled out this piece of mahogany, and I think I'm just going to make some some handles to attach out here and uh, shape them and and uh, see what it looks like and uh, just mark the center lines on both this and the side and then measured 40 millimeters out from each side and I'll go ahead and cut the mortises So now the next step is to establish how far down I, uh, the sides I want to, to apply them. And so this is nominally 15 millimeters, so I want 15 millimeters plus nominally half the thickness of this piece, which is another seven and a half millimeters. So I think I'll go eight. So so 8 and 15 to the center of the mortise will be 23 millimeters. to the router table now and I'm just going to uh, mill a profile. This is a, in essence a two inch core box bit. I've slowed the router bit, or router speed down to where it's going. Uh, basically the tip speed at the end is under 100 miles an hour. So this is what a two inch core box bit gives you. A little less than halfway through. 
and uh, I'm going to trim this trim this off give you a little ledge to hold your wrap your fingers under and uh, but not stick out too far what the profile looks like now. some marks where I want to want to do it and I'm just going to sand it to the to the radius of this drum Okay, so I'm going to touch up these edges, take the sharp corners off with some hand sanding. Now I've got the, uh, I'm ready to do the joinery for the slide, for the uh, compound miters. And I decided to use uh, biscuits. And originally I had intended on using number 10 biscuits. So I always cut an extra piece for test cuts. And I don't know whether the camera will pick this, but I used the largest spacer that I had for the lamello um, biscuit cutter and it just with this thickness material it just barely you see the arc just barely starting to come through so that's not enough for me so I've decided to go to uh, a number zero biscuit one thing I would like to uh, suggest and you can use this remember this angle is not 45 degrees it's 43 so there's two ways to do that you can take a bevel gauge and set it to the correct uh, angle then set your fence that way and I don't use the spacer when I do that or you can just take your workpiece here and with the fence position make sure it's that it does not have any gaps between the uh, workpiece and the blade or workpiece and the uh, base Okay, so now I've got my uh, plate slots cut or biscuit slots cut, and now I should be ready to uh, do a glue up. But before I do that, I want to take a block plane or a small plane, and anything that I can't reach on the inside corners. I want to go ahead and, sh and chamfer that now just to soften the edges somewhat. And I'm also going to do my final sanding on the inside of, of the uh, workpiece. Now I'm ready to do my final sanding on the inside. I'm not going to worry about the outside yet. 
I'm going to wait till after this thing is glued together. So let me turn the vacuum pump on again. Okay, so that should have sanded away any last remnants of the, uh, the pencil marks from the inside. So I hope you've enjoyed the part one of the compound miter serving tray. Uh, the second part will cover the compound miter assembly, glue up, and some, some tips on clamping and uh, finishing. Thank you for watching. Feel free to post any questions or comments and uh, have a great day.